Welcome to Leisure Gamer Network, a home for working professionals, students, parents, or anyone else with a passion for gaming but have time constraints on when you can play. We review games after an hour of gameplay to see if they grabbed our attention and are worth your time playing. In Castlevania Lords of Shadow, you play as Gabriel Belma, an orphan raised by the Brotherhood of Light, who has exceptional fighting skills but is prone to slipping into dark and quiet moods. The story picks up in a world which is fraught with pain and despair, which is eloquently embellished with the dark monologue narrated by the famous Patrick Stewart. These are dark times. Times without hope. Gabriel's childhood sweetheart was murdered a few days prior to the start of the game, and the elders of the Order sent Gabriel on his quest to find the evil that killed her. The story seems simple at first, find out what killed your love, and seek revenge. However, from the short time I spent with the game, I have a feeling the story will be anything but simple as Gabriel progresses through the dark and lonely world. Castlevania is an action-adventure game in a similar style as God of War or Ninja Gaiden, and for people who have played those games, Castlevania will feel extremely familiar. Fight monsters to gain experience. Use that experience to purchase improved combat skills. Unlock item upgrades such as increased throwing dagger capacity. Weapon upgrades like the grapple attachment for your wicked cool battle cross. And collect life crystals that will increase your maximum health. At the start, combat is broken down fairly simple. Pressing the X button unleashes a direct attack on targets in front of Gabriel. Pressing the Y button performs air of the effect attacks which hit enemies all around Gabriel with slightly less force than a direct attack. Add the A button to the mix which performs a jump to fling enemies into the air and use aerial attacks, or use the jump as a way to rain death on your enemies by smashing down on them. As Gabriel progresses through the world, he can unlock new skills with experience points, which build on each other and allow you to mix up your combat techniques when facing certain monsters. Within the hour that I played, it was enjoyable to gain new skills and figure out the most effective way to pummel enemies. The few skills I learned and weapons unlocked made me feel really powerful, yet the game remained challenging. In addition to the combat, there is a mix of puzzle games that might take place in the level design, or more complex puzzles that take on a cinematic feel and must be completed within specific time limits. Platforming isn't as prominent as the combat, but it ranges from simple ledge jumping or being patient while environmental hazards subside, which was annoying to me because I didn't feel like the hazards progressed the gameplay. But maybe I'm just impatient. My favorite platforming sections were the ones with incredible views of the landscape and demanded a variety of skills such as jumping, hanging, repelling, and climbing. If you enjoyed Prince of Persia-esque platforming, you will like these sequences. The camera in Castlevania is fixed, and the player does not have control of its movements. While this is not terrible, I found myself wanting to move the camera to take in the beautiful landscapes, or adjust it slightly throughout combat. However, without the ability to move the camera, the gamer can focus on what Castlevania wants you to do. Fight, run, jump, and solve puzzles instead of worrying yourself with the camera angles. The only time it took me away from the gameplay was when I was pressing a certain direction on the joystick, and then the camera angle changed. That same joystick location moved Gabriel in the wrong direction, and I had to take the time to readjust my thumb. Although minor, it was still an annoyance and took me out of the game world. There are also quick time events while exploring the environments and during the combat. The most common occurrence is when you grapple an enemy and perform a finishing move, or at the end of a boss battle when your well-placed button pressing makes Gabriel dish out some pretty brutal finishing moves. A lot of detail went into the graphics both on the character and environmental level. Cutscenes are a common occurrence inside Castlevania, and each one was enjoyable to watch because of the attention to detail. The gameplay graphics are equally impressive with a variety of level design within the first hour, and extraordinary details such as frogs jumping around the bog, or birds hanging out in the forest. The variety of landscapes and epic views combine with the story and combat to make the game feel larger than life and Gabriel's struggle is just that much more courageous when faced with such a huge world.
The frame rate chugged along a few times during the gameplay, most notably when the tutorial tips popped up on the screen, but since the tips don't last past the first few levels, it is nothing to worry about. Voiceover work is well done. Even though Patrick's monologues are a little over the top, he has a perfect voice for narration and could probably make anything sound cool. What motivates a man to confront the challenges that most of us would run from? Condemning him to solitude, exposing him to defeat and death. The sound engineering is also great. Levels are filled with ambient sounds of the environment, such as birds chirping or geysers oozing gas in the swamp. Castlevania introduces new combat techniques, level design, and story elements in bite-sized amounts. After each level, you are left wanting to learn more about the story, or try out new combat moves you just learned. Each level has a trial that is unlocked after the first run-through. The level has a completion ranking showing how much you achieved or missed after each stage. You will often encounter new areas that cannot be reached by your current skill set and must be returned to when you learn new skills. All these elements combine to encourage players to replay levels, especially if you have an insatiable desire to get 100% on every stage. As a leisure gamer, Castlevania made me want to continue playing past the one hour mark, but I would have to be in the right mood to pick up the game. With only a single player mode and a dark and intense story, Castlevania would be best enjoyed when I was in a mood to be alone. Also, to fully appreciate the game, I would need to set aside some time in order to be fully engaged in the game. It is not one that you can just pick up and put down without missing the finer details inside the game. Make sure you have your daggers with you. One never knows when need may arise. For your own thoughts on the game, post in the comment section below, and remember to subscribe to become part of the Leisure Gamer Network. Till next time, enjoy gaming.